Hello, I think. Hello, I think we're live. I can see the chat, so let me know if we're live. Hello. Good morning. It is still the morning. It's 11 o'clock. Good. How are you doing? Right, hopefully the stream is all okay. I hope you can hear me. If you can hear a helicopter in the background, I apologize. But for some reason, right at 11 o'clock, there decided to be a very low flying helicopter outside of our window. So I can hear it. I'm hoping that you can not hear it. Um, but let me know if there's any sound problems. Morning, we can hear you. Oh, good. Okay, I've got a few people ready in the chat. Say hello in the chat. How are you doing? We should all be ready. So I'm hoping you can see everything and that you can hear everything and that we're good to go. Ah, oh, we have Amaya in the chat. Hiya, thanks for doing this. No problem. Thank you for joining me. So you should be able to see what we're going to be working on today. Just noticed that that is looking a little bit funny. Oh. No, I don't want that one. I want this one. I'm just going to move that up a little bit. Is that better? There you go. It's cutting off our logo a little bit, so I'll move that around. Right, so how are you doing on this grey Tuesday? It's a little bit grey outside. Uh, haha, it's me! Ah, Stephen is in the chat, but it's not Stephen. <laughs> I know that now. It was, it was making me giggle the way that I had lots of different Stevens in the chat and none of them were called Stephen, actually. So, hello, it's Harley. Oh, Harley, thanks for coming back. Ooh, we have a Mrs. Ma Ma Mariah Hardy? Maria Hardy? I know there will be some of you that are using different Google accounts, have different names. So if I call you the wrong name, I do apologize. Just let me know. Uh, what your real name is and I'll try and remember that okay uh, so yeah I do apologize oh Maya's saying pretty good it's very sunny here oh that's nice you've got some sunshine we've got a little bit we're a little bit gray oh how are you oh so I I am very well I have woken up I've had some coffee I'm ready to go uh, hopefully you're ready to go as well uh, Harley's back saying, you got it, you got it. Yes, I know. Oh, you too. Oh, you're doing good too. I hope that's what you mean. So let's have a look. So um, we are going to be working with Twine today. So some of you might be familiar with Twine. Uh, some of you might not be. Don't worry. That's absolutely fine. Um, I should say as well, welcome back uh, or welcome to the National Video Game Museum's YouTube channel. Uh, so my name is Leah and I am the learning officer for the Video Game Museum. So I run workshops and things uh, usually in the museum, but right now we can't be in the museum. So I am running workshops online instead um, for you guys. So we are live uh, unless you're watching this on catch up later, in, the, in which case I'm not live. But you can join me on Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 o'clock. Uh, so on Tuesdays we do a kind of educational thing, uh, we learn how to use some software, make some video games, and then on the Friday we're doing some let's plays. So we're playing through some games uh, that are actually good. So educational games that we think are really good as well. Uh, so we played Assassin's Creed Odyssey last Friday and this week we are playing Letter Quest Remastered, okay? Uh, so that is about defeating monsters by writing words and spelling words. So I might need your help thinking of some words. It's a bit like um, Boggle, if you've ever played Boggle. You get a scrambled up bunch of letters and you have to make some words out of it. So if you want to join me on Friday, I might need your help. Um, but today we're going to be using Twine. Uh, and it's a basically, an interactive storytelling app. Wow, epic, good. Well, hopefully you'll join me if you think it's epic. I think it's epic, it's a good game. Uh, so you might have played before or read uh, some of those choose your own adventures storybooks. You know, the ones where you 
you read a paragraph and it gives you a choice and you have to uh, turn to a certain page in the book to progress the story. So the choices that you make affect the story in a certain way. So you might be familiar with those, you might have played those kinds of games online as well. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be writing a story but we're going to make it interactive. Oh yes, fighting fantasy books. Those are those are those kind of books as well. I think there might be a choose your own adventure wimpy kid book as well. I could be making that up. I feel like there is. I know there's a wimpy kid fan watching, so maybe they'll be able to tell me. Um, but yes, the fighting fantasy books are really good if you like those kinds of things, and I'm sure that you've read other ones as well. Uh, they used to be all the range when I was a kid. Uh, so. That's what we're, we're going to be doing. So I will be asking for your help as well. I might need to help uh, me come up with some of the story that we're going to write. Uh, so if you have any ideas, write them down. Um, I don't think we've got any more chat. What, what else is going on in the chat? Oh, ooh, Harley's got a twin. Oh, hello, Harley's twin. If you're watching, hello. Uh, so I will introduce you to Twine. Uh, show you how to use it, how it works, and how you can create your own story. Um, and hopefully you can start writing your own stories as well. Um, I should say that you can do this offline as well. So if you wanted to do this kind of thing, but you didn't have access to a computer, uh, then you can write your own storybooks and put them on pieces of paper instead. Uh, and you can use that to map out your story when you're using Twine as well. That can be really helpful. Uh, stop you getting confused, help you plan your story in advance as well. Um, or you can just play around and see where it leads you. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, so, to find Twine, you need to go to the twinery.org or twinery.org. Uh, and this is what it will look like when you head there. So it tells you Twine is an open source tool for telling interactive, non-linear stories. Uh, non-linear means that they don't go sort of, they don't follow one path. So when you read a book, you obviously just pay, you, you know, turn the page and turn the next page and they can only go in one direction unless you start reading different pages. But then the story doesn't make much sense. Um, but this is more like a sort of web of stories. So there's different ways that you can go and it can go back on itself. And you'll see what we mean when we start doing this. But Twine is really good because there's lots of people that use it. There's lots of examples of games and there's lots of tutorials as well. So this is just one of them. We're just gonna get you started and show you the very basics. Uh, so hopefully you can get going right away. But if you want to make more complicated things, if you want to add in sound and pictures, there are ways to do that as well. And there's lots of tutorials that will show you how to do that. And maybe we'll come back and we'll do a, a more complicated one later on. Uh, so let me know if you'd like to see that. But yes, this is Twine. So Twine, it has a Twine wiki, which is down here. I'm hoping you can see my mouth, my, ma my mouth, my mouse. Uh, so if you want to, find out something, there's probably a tutorial on there for you. So you can click on that and it will show you the Twine wiki, which is very helpful. Um, and there is a little post-it note here. This looks like a little cork board. Uh, and this tells you about downloading it. So uh, one of the important things with Twine is knowing how to save your stuff properly. Um, so you don't lose anything, basically. Uh, so it can be a little bit confusing, um, but you can use Twine online or you can download it. So if you watched our uh, Piscal app stream where we made pixel art, it's a bit like that. You can download it and use it on your computer or you can use it online as well. Uh, and what you do depends on how you save it. So you can save things online in your browser without an account if you use it online. But anyone who uses that same browser will have access to your story as well. So if you want to keep your story safe, maybe if you've got a younger brother or sister, you don't want mucking around in your story, you can make your own account, okay? Um, but we'll get to the saving a little bit later on because it can be tricky. Oh, we've got someone in the chat. Rooster, Rooster233, hello, you've only just joined the chat. Ah, oh, hello. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm just explaining Twine. So, 
first of all, oh, I should say as well, this is version 2.0, okay? So Twine 2.0. So there have been versions out previously, and this is a more updated version. Uh, so if you look for tutorials, things like that, um, make sure that the tutorials for the right version. Both versions are similar, so the tutorials might still make sense, but things might look a bit different. It could get a bit confusing. Okay, I've got that. Right, so yes, so here you can use it online or here you've got all your downloads for the different versions of computers that you have. So make sure you're downloading the right version for the right computer too. So let's go. Will this stream get uploaded as a video? Yes, it will. It will. It will go onto our YouTube channel so you can go back and you can rewatch it um, and pause it and skip forward my boring talky bits if you'd like uh, to find exactly what you need. So yes, it will be on there as soon as we can put it up once YouTube has finished doing whatever magic it does to the videos and it's ready to go. Okay. So yeah, check for that. There is also on our website, there will be a PDF. Actually, I can show you this. If I go up here, you should now see our website. This is the National Video Game Museum's website. And on here, we've got tutorials and the video links uh, for everything that we've been doing so far. So if you scroll down a little bit, you have interactive storytelling. So this is the PDF, like a, a document that takes you through the same sorts of things that I'm going to be taking through you through today. Uh, so if you do want to read it instead of watching me, you can go and you can download that too. Okay, so let's go back to Twine. You're the best at this stuff. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm definitely not the best at this stuff, but I am trying and I really enjoy it. So that makes me happy to hear. So let's have a look. Right. We've got use it online. Um, so we're going to do that today. Okay. And you can do that while you're sort of figuring it out. And if you want to keep all your stories in one place, it's probably better for you to download it later on. So get some help with gro grown ups if you need that as well. All right. Thank you. No problem. Right. Let's have a look. So we're going to load Twine. So when you first get onto Twine, this is what it looks like. Okay. Uh, so I'm hoping that you can see that. Oh, I might need to move it down a little bit. Yeah, I'll use it. You can't see the logo. It's cut off the top of the logo, but who cares? Right. So this is our story list. And at the moment, our story list is, well, it's empty. There are no stories. Okay. It says you have no stories saved in Twine right now. To get started, you can either create a new story or import an existing one from a file. So let's do that, shall we? Well, we'll create a new one. So if you've um, maybe been using an online version and you've downloaded it and you want to put your story into the downloaded version of Twine that you've been working on online, uh, you can download it. I'll show you how to do that later on as well. Um, and then you can upload it into your downloaded version so you won't lose it, okay? So usually you'd see all your different stories as well. And down here, oh, it's just kind of cut off by my head on the stream, but you, there's a little sun and a little moon and it will sh change the way that you're working. So if you like a lighter background, you can work like that or you can click on the little moon, which you can just about see at the top of my head. It will make it dark again. So if you prefer using this way, if this way is easy for you to read, you can do that as well. But we're going to use it the, light, the lighter way today because um, that's what I find easier. So. Let's have a look. You should see there's a button here called story. That's how we're going to start our story. But first of all, I'm going to show you an example of a twine story, just so you can kind of get your head around it, how it works. So things hopefully make more sense as we go along. So I have got a story that we can share the link to as well later on. And it's in that PDF. If you want to go back and play it for yourself, it's called a bucket filled with sand. It's a bit of a strange story um, and this one actually has some pictures so you can see what I mean about adding pictures we're not going to be doing that today because that's where it gets a little bit tricky so we probably need a little bit more time um, but here's the kind of thing that you can do uh, so this is made by AC uh, God Godleyman Godleyman I think oh this is this is the worst part, but bit about streaming is that you get everyone's names said incorrectly so I do apologize for that as well right so here's a bucket filled with sand turn it over yes or no 
I'm gonna say yes. Do shout if you want me to choose any of the options. Just remember there's a little bit of a delay, okay? So if I choose something and you've shouted the other answer, don't worry. So, here you go. You turn the bucket out and the castle stands before you. In a hundred years, the dragon will come. Okay, so this is what I mean about it giving you choices. Um, it says dig a moat or decorate. So do we dig a moat or do we decorate? I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait for you, the chat. What do you think? Do we dig a moat or do we decorate? What would you, what would you like to do? I quite like moats. I would, um, oh, someone's saying dig. Should we dig? I, I, I'm, I'm up for digging a moat. Let's dig a moat, okay. Dig, dig. <laughs> right, I've digged. Um, I dug? I, I don't know. Right, the castle is secure. A fortress safe against the world. Oh, people are saying dig, dig. Okay, we digged. We, we dug. We dug a moat, we dug a moat. That's what we did, right. In 90 years, the dragon will come. Prepare for war. Okay, so this time it hasn't given us a choice. It's given us one option. So I guess we're just gonna prepare for war. Okay, the army is strong and its banners are many. We've got nice banners. I'm happy with that, okay. There is something stirring in the north. In 80 years, the dragon will come. So the dragon is counting down. Oh, do we attack or defend? Do we attack or defend? I don't know. What are we attacking? I don't even know what we're attacking. We're just attacking now. Something stirring in the north. So the important thing about this is that the choices that you make have an impact on the story. So it would be a little bit boring to make all these choices to have nothing happen in the story. Oh, oh no, we've got, we've got mixed responses. Defend, attack, defend. Well, that's two defends and one attack. Oh, and another defend. Oh no, that's the same one twice. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna defend or we'll defend. Right, there we go, we're defending. The castle is safe. The people grow hungry. The soldiers grow restless. Oh no, people grow hungry. Okay. Uh, in 70 years, the castle, the, the castle, the dragon will come. Control the people or send the army out to raid. Oh no. Um, control the people. Well, surely we need to control the people by giving them food, don't we? Not really controlling them. Or, I don't know. Send. Send the army out to raid. That feels a bit cruel. Okay, let's do that. Okay, the army battles long, the soldiers fight hard. After many losses and deaths, they can return, having gained new fertile lands and many other spoils. Okay, so maybe sending the army out was the right choice. Fair enough. Um, in 60 years, the dragon will come. Move your citizens out to the, into the newly conquered lands. Offer a place in the new lands for all those willing to pledge loyalty. Oh, okay. So we could create an empire, I guess? Or we could send, move our citizens out. They were kind of hungry. Maybe we could do that. And there's some things happening in the, the picture as well. There's some things that have been added. Our sand castle has a turret. Offer a place. That might be good. We might have too many people and run out of food. We'll try it. We'll try it. Okay. The castle is now the seat to a large and powerful kingdom. There is a rebellion against amongst the peasantry. The people wish for greater representation for some of their own to have a seat within the castle walls and their voices be heard. Okay, well, I, I'm, I'm up for democracy. I mean, uh, in 50 years, okay, in 50 years, the dragon will come. Okay, so we're running out of time. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen when the dragon comes. They may elect a council of five. You will select a representative. I'll give them the choice. I'll give them the choice, I think. Right. The seat of the kingdom now answers to a council of five. The council should be re-elected each decade. Okay. They are sated for now, but the rebellion has been seeded amongst the people. Oh no, there's gonna be a rebellion. They don't like our rule. Um, in 40 years, the dragon will come. Keep a close eye on this new council 
keep a close eye on the people. I think the people. Maybe. As the time comes to elect a new council for the kingdom, there is disquiet once again. People do not feel fairly treated. They argue, riot, and there is a threat of civil war. Oh no, this hasn't gone well. This hasn't gone well. Negotiate with the warring sides for better representation. Quash the rebellion and restore your power. Ooh. Okay, do we negotiate or quash? Quash is a good word. I like the word quash. Maybe we can use that somehow in our story. <laughs> in 30 years, the dragon will come. Okay, so something's counting down. So I guess something's going to happen. Negotiate. Okay, people are saying negotiate. Okay, negotiate. Oh no, the voting within the kingdom has been chaos. Whoops. They ask for fairness and clarity. Okay, well that's 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 fair. That's fair, you know. Uh, in twenty years, the dragon will come. Right, quash him. Oh no, some people are saying quash. Oh no. Okay, I, I negotiated. I think I think that went okay. Um, conduct a sentence. Assure every person has a voice. Right. Okay. So there isn't an option this time. Time. This is just what we need to do. So let's do that. The people are contented. Uh, they rebel against the kingdom against each other and themselves new songs sing to all of this the old songs sing to you to remember what is coming oh no the dragon in 10 years the dragon will come gather the armies fight for what is coming await the end do we fight what is coming or do we await fight or await i think this is our last choice so i'll, I'll give the stream a little bit of time to catch up and then we're going to get back to making our own story um, but hopefully you can kind of see how this works. Uh, so are we gathering? Are we awaiting? Or gather the armies? Do we fight? I think I know what's going to happen. I think we're pro I'm assuming that you're going to go with fight. Yes. Okay. Fight. Oh, some people are saying gather. Fight. Gather. Fight. Okay. Well, that's... Fight is winning. So maybe we fight. Let's fight. Tomorrow the dragon will come. Witness or leave? I don't know, do we leave? Do we witness? I wanna see what happens. We're gonna witness. The dragon comes and sweeps the land. I don't know. <laughs> Harley's coming in the chat. I don't know. That's fine, I don't know either. That's why I'm asking for your help. <laughs> uh, uh, the dragon comes and sweeps the land, takes all there is and pulls it back to sea. Your feet are wet. Maybe come another day and fill the bucket once again. Okay, so th I, maybe the dragon was the sea. Maybe the dragon was a metaphor. Okay, right. Well, you, you can kind of see how that works. So the things that we uh, choose, those options lead to different things. And the great back bit about this story is that you can go back and play it for yourself and get a different outcome. Something different will happen. Uh, so your story won't be the same as mine, as long as you don't make exactly the same choices. Um, so maybe something else will happen. So if you go and play this game, go and have a look and see what it's called. It's called a bucket filled with sand. Okay, so do have a look. Uh, let me know what happens if you get something else that happens. So at the moment, the sandcastle has gone. Okay, so right, let's get back to Twine. I mean, that was fun, but let's get back to Twine. Uh, so as I said, this is our story list. This here, this big white space, there are no stories there at the minute. Uh, so let's start a story. Uh, what should our story be named? Right, so when you click plus story, uh, it will give you the option to name your story. Now, you don't have to think long and hard about this, okay? Uh, the great thing is that you can change it later. It says you, tells you that. Uh, so if you do choose something and you go, ah, oh, that, that doesn't make sense anymore. I don't like that title. You can just edit it so you don't have to spend too long before you even begin your story thinking of a really good title you can if you want but you don't need to okay so i'm just going to call our story nvm maybe live stream because that is what we're doing add there we go right so this is where you create your story uh so uh it looks like some graph paper there is a uh, a square in the middle here that you can sort of click and drag around 
and it says Untitled Passage. Um, our title is down here as well, so you know which story that you're working on. Um, you've got options to test things, to play things, and to add a passage. Um, but these little boxes here, these are where you're going to be creating your story. Um, you're not going to put your whole story into one of these boxes. Um, you're going to have lots of boxes, okay? It's going to get, well, depending on how story, uh, complicated your story is, there could be lots of boxes. Uh, so there are things to organise your boxes as well. So if you're creating really long and complicated stories, um, you can use things like tags that will show you. So to start, you double click on that box uh, with your mouse and it brings up uh, a box like this. And at the moment that's untitled um, and there is a little bit of text here that says double click on this passage to edit it. And there's the option to put tags in. So uh, Tags can help you organise your boxes. If you're looking for a certain box, you can tag them um, and that helps you find them later on. We're not going to have that many to start with, so I'm not going to put the tags in here, okay? Um, so I'm just going to change this title to start. This is the start. Oh, now you can see all my terrible spelling. Right, start. This is the start of our story. Um, now, I should say as well, if you are worried about your spelling if you're oh, I don't, it's not looking right it's spelling isn't right don't worry okay because everything in this you can go back and you can edit later okay just like the title you can go back and edit anything in your story okay uh, so don't worry too much right so uh we want to double click on this and let's get rid of it now when you get rid of it so i just press backspace on the keyboard you can see there is lots of text that comes up now this isn't going to be in your story this are just some helpful tips from Twine um, about what you can do with your story. So some of the things we're going to be uh, looking at. So editing the way the text looks um, and linking. So making those choices that we played in that um, bucket filled with sand game um, and having the different options do different things. OK, so once you start typing, this will disappear. But it's also there if you need it. Just need a reminder because sometimes it can get a lot to remember. Um, so you have to put certain um, characters in for certain things to happen for Twine to recognise that oh, this is a choice or you want this to uh, be bold or in italics. Um, but you can always go and look that up as well if you do forget. So don't worry. I should say if you do have any questions, um, if I go over something too quickly, uh, you can always go and watch the stream back afterwards or you can just ask me in the chat. Okay? So if you do have any questions, just shout. I might not be able to answer them all, but I'll do my best. Okay, Right, so now is this is the tough part this is where you just start writing a story now if you've already planned the story you can just start putting things in um i don't know i'll just say this is the start of the story what to write okay what, to, what do I write? Any ideas? You could start with a story that you already know and try to change it or try to put it in this format. If you maybe love a film or even a video game um, and maybe you want to make it into an interactive story, like you really like that story, you want to have some sort of part in it, then you could do that as well. Uh, you could make up your own story entirely. Oh, going for the, going outside for the first time after lockdown. We could write about that. We could write about what you wanted to do. Um, you could write about outdoors. You could write about inside. You could write about your lockdown. Where are you locked down? Um, or maybe for your favourite food. Uh, what to write? Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to make it two options. I'm going to say write a really long boring story or write a short exciting oh that's not how you spell exciting exciting story you can write about Bertie the cat okay write about Bertie 
the cat. Okay. So we have three things to write about. Now, this is the start of our story, obviously, and these are the options. So we want people to click on those. Um, but if I click elsewhere now on that screen, or if I press escape, we'll get back to where we were. Now, it will save as you go along, okay? Um, so if you want to, like, um, you don't have to worry about saving after each time you write something, but you can also um, go back and save the whole thing later on. Cats still get to go out. Cats do still get to go out. That is true, Becky. It must be a bit weird for the cats going out and suddenly realising that all the humans are staying inside instead of the cats staying inside. Very odd. Maybe we'll do that. True. Yeah, true. Uh, so, right now, if we test, we can, we can test, we can play our game. So if I click on play, it should open up our story. And this is what it looks like. Uh, so it says, this is the start of the story, what to write. And now these are our three options, but at the moment, um, we can't click on them. And that's because we've got to do something to make Twine recognise that these are the options. So let's close that and let's go back. <gasps> Ooh, oh my God, yes, right about cats going outside. Okay, well, that can be one of the options. So if you were playing this game, that's what you would be picking. That's the option you'd pick, okay. Oh, we've got Harley back. I'm doing what you're doing, but about unicorns versus dinosaurs. Okay, well, that's much more exciting than my story so far. Right, so uh, let's show you what we're doing. So I'm going to add some more of these. But we need to make these options. So to do that, we're going to put them in square brackets. So when you look on your keyboard, uh, you've got sort of round brackets look a bit like this but you've also got square brackets that look like that I can just show you what I'm doing right um oh we don't want that one we want these so these are the square brackets I'm hoping you can see that it's a little bit small but they are little square brackets and we want two of them at the start of the choice and then two of them at the end and you can see that they kind of change color it might be a little bit hard to see on the stream but they change color and we're going to do that around each of these like that ah and you can kind of see that they become underlined and that is twine recognizing what you're doing it's saying ah these are the options okay i need to do that right so now we've added the options we've started the story and now when we go back to twine we get three options and there's three arrows so twine has automatically done this part uh, and you can see that each of the titles of these passages are the options that we put in in the first part of the story. So now, if we press play, we can click on these. So this is the start of the story, what to write. And it says write about Bertie the cat. Okay, so that was the option that we wanted to pick. So we click on that and it brings up a new page, but there's nothing in that. It's just saying double click this passage to edit it because we haven't edited it yet. Okay, so let's go and do that. Oh, we can go back as well. Oh, so yeah, I should say the little arrows. So when you're going through stories, sometimes people will let you go back and you can choose a different option. Right, let's close that. So, I don't know. I think I'm going to say... Mm, so write a really long, boring story. You write for a while, but it's so boring that you fall asleep at your desk. I think. So you write for a while, but it's so boring that you fall asleep at your desk. When you wake up you'd like to write about something else that's just too boring so let's do that now so we've added that as an option we'll come back to this one i think because it's something we can do um shall we say write a short exciting story um hmm i think i'm gonna put you write for 30 seconds, but then you're finished. 
Oh, I can't. Oh, pen spell. Right, finished. It really was short. Too short. So that short story is too short. And then, write about Bertie the cat. Okay, so Bertie the cat is the cat that is going outside during lockdown. That's what we decided. So, Bertie runs through the cat lap. Heading outside to explore. After a little while, she, ooh, I've just decided Bertie's a she. Bertie finds, <laughs> okay, Bertie finds something. He is wearing a mask, but I'm gonna put that in. Wearing a mask, of course. Okay, so heading outside to explore. After a little while, Bertie finds something. What does Bertie find? We need, I think, two options. Any ideas? What does Bertie find? Could be anything. So Bertie runs through the cat flap, wearing a mask, heading outside to explore. After a little while, Bertie finds something. So what does Bertie find? Oh, just clicked off it. Click back, there we go. Any ideas? I'll give the chat a little bit of time to catch up. Let me know. What do you think he's gonna find? Could find the slang castle from the last story. Could maybe find some unicorns or dinosaurs. <laughs> maybe our stories could um, combine, Harley. Maybe Bertie finds the story about unicorns and dinosaurs. Missy the Lassa. Oh, what's a Lassa? Missy. An egg, a big egg. <laughs> okay, so we have Missy. Oh, Lassie, is Missy a Lassie? Is it rhyming? So let's put that in. So we need to put our brackets in because that's going to be one of our options. So we'll put a uh, big. Oh, let's, let's put some capital letters in there. A dog. Okay, Missy. A la oh, is it a type of dog? Or is it a lassie? Okay, we'll put Missy the dog. How about that? Because then we can always add more detail later on as well. So a, we, she finds, or Bertie finds, a big egg. And, yeah, okay, yes, I got you. And Missy, the dog. There we go. Okay, so those are our two options. So now, we go that way. We've got two more options. We've got a big egg and Missy, the dog. Okay. Oh, uh, what, what did you say? Oh, don't worry. <laughs> uh, I was um, asking about uh what is going to happen in our story but you can help with the next bit so maybe we'll go to our big egg so we've got i tell you what we'll ask you about both because that'd be a little bit quicker so we've got bertie runs through the cat flap wearing a mask of course and she finds a big egg and missy the dog okay no <laughs> don't, don't worry it's okay uh so what what happens when she finds the big egg what happens when she finds Missy the dog? Okay, so any op wait, this is kind of what happens to our story. You can move things about, but these um, little arrows tell you where your story's going. So if you're not sure where this box leads, you can see, okay, it's leading to these two. It's not going over here because they're not connected by this little arrow. And these ones aren't really connected to anything. So that story would end there. So we've got a story about Bertie the cat, who is the cat that is allowed to go outside during lockdown and explore. So if you have any ideas for where the story can go, put them into the chat now and I'll get to them. Okay, I'll put them in the story somehow, okay? So in the meantime, while you're thinking of ideas, I'll show you um, how we can link the story back to other passages. So at the moment, we're just making new ones. So we're making new options and we're making new passages and the story's going on and on. But sometimes you might want the story to go back to an old passage. So you, they might, you may follow a road somewhere and it leads to a dead end, so they need to go back. Otherwise, the story just ends there. 
so I'll show you what I mean. If we press play, here we go. This is the start of the story, what to write. So we write a really long, boring story and it says you write for a while, but it's so boring that you fall asleep at your desk. When you wake up, you'd like to write about something else. But what's the thing we can do here? So this is just the end of the story and that was kind of short. So maybe we'll send them back to the other options. How about that? Oh, let's go back. So uh, this one as well, this one just ends. It was really short, too short, okay? And then we've got Bertie the cat and here we've got a little bit more of the story carrying on. So Bertie runs through the cat, a cat flap, wearing a mask, heading outside to explore. After a little, uh, Bertie finds something and we've got these two options that we can click. We just haven't put those in there yet, okay? So let's go back and add that in so we want i think we want these two to lead to this passage because that's where the story sort of continues on okay so let's do that shall we to do that we need to add the option but we need it to be the same as the title uh so it was bertie so if we write oh no yes it was that one so look you can see that these pop up so i put w in and it's brought up the option for Bertie the cat. So if I click that one now, it will pop that in for me. So you can write them out yourself. You just have to make sure they match exactly. Otherwise they won't link back to the right passage. They'll make a new one because they'll be a little bit different. Okay. So let's go back. And now you can see if I move that, there is an arrow going from this option down to write about Bertie the cat. Okay. And we can do that for this one as well. So that our readers don't get stuck. So if I put a W in, you should be able to see it. I'm double clicking like that. Ta-da! Write about Bertie the cat. Okay, and if I click off, there's another arrow. So it's already getting a little bit complicated, but you can kind of see. So this one goes to this one, and it goes to this one, and it carries on here. This one goes to that one, and it goes over here, and it carries on. Okay, hopefully everyone is still with me. This all makes sense. So do let me know if you have any questions, remember? Or if you want me to show you something again, I can do that. So let's have a look. Write about Bertie the cat. Um, big egg, Missy the dog. Any ideas? Oh, you've got to go, Harley. That's okay. Don't worry. We'll see you next time. And you can catch up with the stream afterwards later on, okay? If you do want some help. Good luck with your story. So let's carry on. Uh, we've got a big egg. So let's say Bertie um, approaches the... Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. We've got Bertie and Missy become friends. Okay, I'll put that into the other one. Bertie approaches the egg and gives it a, a sniff. I'm going to say nothing happens. So I'll stay that for... I'll do that for now. And then, here we go. You're awesome, bye. Oh, thanks, Harley. You're awesome too. Thanks for joining us. So let's have a look. We want, okay, so this is Mrs. Missy the dog. So we want Bertie and Missy to become friends. Bertie, I'm going to say Bertie gives um, Missy a sniff as well. Who's, so I'm going to say Bertie sniffs Missy who smiles at Bertie happily. Um, Bertie likes Missy so, so they become friends. Okay so they're friends right so that's our two options. So we didn't add anything that happens. So maybe nothing happens with the egg. So how about if in this option, Bertie sees Missy also looking at the egg. Okay, so sees Missy, oh, put a capital, it's a name, Missy the dog looking at the egg too. Is that how you see? That's not it, is it? There we go. Right. Bertie sees Missy the dog looking at the egg too. Okay. Now, 
I want this to be an option, but I want it to link to this option here. But to do that, I would need to put in, let's see, Missy the dog. But, oh, there we go. That wouldn't really make sense in the story, okay? So if we, should we test it? Let's test, well, let's play it, there we go. So we want to go to Bertie the cat and the big egg. So it says, Bertie sees Missy the dog uh, looking at the egg too. And then it just says, Missy the dog. Now, that doesn't really make any sense. So we need to change how we put that option in just a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's have a look. Da -da -da. Now there's something you can do using like a bar. It's basically like a line. So on your keyboard, on my keyboard, it's in the bottom left hand corner, uh, round about the control and the windows button if you have a windows computer. And there's a backslash, so you know forward slash, there's a backslash like that. And then that one has a line on it as well. So uh, if you hit uh, alt and then press that, there's a line. So you might notice that there's a line. Can you see that? I'm hoping you can. It's a little bit small, but hopefully you can see that. Now, anything we put before that line, okay, will appear in the story, but anything after it won't, but it will still recognize that we want it to link to that passage, which is really clever. So we see Bertie sees Missy the dog looking at the egg too. And I'm gonna say Bertie, um, heads over to see Missy, like that, okay? So hopefully this will make more sense. So if we do that now, and I think we can, if we do test, will it take us to that one? Ah, oh, no, it won't, okay, right. Let's, we want to write about Bertie, and we want to find him a big egg. And now you can see it says, Bertie sees Missy the dog looking at the egg too. Bertie heads over to see Missy. So it should, when we click on it, take us to that par paragraph, that passage, okay? And, but it doesn't say Missy the dog, okay? So our story makes a little bit more sense, okay? So if you want to link passages, but you don't want to keep the title in that story as it is now, you can change that, all right? So hopefully that's all making sense so far. So we've only got like 10 more minutes. So if there's any more story ideas, pop them in the chat quickly, um, but I'm gonna show you how to edit some of the, the text so it looks slightly different, okay? So, let's see. Um, there we go. I'm going to make some of the text italics to sort of give it a little bit more emphasis. So to do that, you might have seen right at the start there was, uh, when it gave you all those options, if you put two forward slashes around a word, it kind of became italic. So it can be a little bit hard, hard to see, but this, uh, these italics, these forward slashes won't appear in your story. It would just make that word italic, okay? So it's a bit like if you're writing something in Microsoft Word and you highlight that a bit of text and you make it italic, um, it does the same sort of thing. So let's do that and then let's change something else. Da, 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 da. Heading outside to explore. Let's make this bit bold. Should we do that? Right, I think that is this. So we're gonna pop a two of those speech marks around. Or oh, is it speech marks or is it? Uh, let's try two of these. Right, it's not the speech marks, it's not the two. It is the apostrophes, but it's two apostrophes. Ah, yes, it's that one, okay. So it's two apostrophes. And it says, after a little while, Bertie finds something. So we'll make that really exciting. We'll make it bold. Right now, hopefully, if we test our game, because this is the start of the story, what to write? Let's write a really long, boring story. Okay, so there's nothing on that one. Ah, Bertie runs through the cat flap wearing a mask, heading outside to explore. And then this bit is in bold. Yes, that's what we wanted. Okay, so it says, after a little while, after a little, um, I need to put a while in there. Bertie finds something. So that's the good thing. You can always go, as you're writing the story, go and test everything. So if you're not sure something's working properly or you just want to make sure it looks the way you'd like it to look, you can test it at any point, okay? Um, you don't need to save, you don't need to do anything. You just 
press that play button or that test button and it will show you how everything is working so that is really useful okay let's go back let's try that one ah there we go and then this really is in italics so there's some really simple things that you can do as well uh, we can also do a strike through which is like writing crossing out something so if we want to uh, da, da, da. let's say we're just going to cross this out so if you want to get rid of something you can just uh, delete it get rid of it um, but I'm just going to make it have a line through it like this so I'm going to put two of these wiggly lines so you should see all of these on your keyboard in different places depending on your keyboard you'll find them in different places okay so it says nothing happens and there's two wiggly lines and now there should be a line through it so if we press that go back in oh I can't remember where I put it Oh, wrong one. Wrong one. A big egg. There we are. Once. Okay, so there we go. It's crossed out. So Bertie approaches the egg and gives it a sniff. Nothing happens. And it's crossed out. Okay. There we go. Right, so those are kind of the basics. There. We, uh, so if you want to start making your story, this is a great place. A great, uh, this is sort of a great place to start. This is all you need to start making something. Um, and as you get better, uh, as you start figuring out how Twine really works and you get those basics down, then uh, you can start adding in different things. So you can start changing the way the text looks and you can start figuring out how uh, to add in pictures and sound even. Um, so there are some really good examples of Twine games on the internet as well. Uh, just do bear in mind that not all of them are totally suitable for all audiences, okay? So if you are looking for a Twine game, Get some help from a grown-up if you need that, um, and then you can find the best Twine stories for you, okay? Because you don't want to start reading a story and it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, I'll show you how to save, because we've got about 10 more minutes. It's gone really quickly. So, I'm hoping it's gone quickly for you guys as well, and it hasn't dragged on. Uh, now, let's have a look. So we can go back to our story list. Ta-da! And now we have a story in our story list. So it tells you how many stories you have. We've got one story. And it looks a bit like this with all these different circles. So all those different circles are all the different bubbles. How do you get to the menu? Oh, right, you might not be able to see that. So if I click on here, oh yeah, you can just about. So if you follow my mouse all the way down to the bottom, can you see there's a little house down there? So if you want to get back to that menu, click on that house and it'll take you back to the start of Twine. Now, to get back into your game, you just double click on your Twine story, or if you want to start a new one, go over here and press plus story, and it'll let you upload a, or start a new story, okay? So let's go back into our game. Now, next to our title, so this is our MVM live stream, you can click on this little arrow, and it will show you some other things that you can do, okay? So you could um, publish it, uh, you can select the passages, you can do different things, you can rename it here as well. So if you do want to change your name, like we said, how from the board, how do you get the menu to start? Oh, from here, from here, oh, like this, oh, is it, do you mean this menu? I'm trying to figure out which menu, there can be quite a lot of different menus. So there's the menu down here which will take you back to the home, or how from the board. Oh, do you mean right from the very, very start? Oh, like when you are in the cork board, there's a little option that says use online and you can use that right at the start. Okay, uh, so when you're in the cork board, there's a little um, post-it note that you might have seen right at the start of the screen and it says use online, okay? So you can click on that and it'll take you to this bit here. Uh, if you want to download it, you just have to download it and then it'll take you to this bit, okay? Hoping that's answered your question. Hope so. Um, so I'm going to tell you how to save it. So here it says published file. Now when you do that, it will save your file. Okay, you've got that. Okay, great. It will save your file as a HTML file. Now, um, if you want to share this with friends, uh, at the moment, I'd recommend sending them the file and then they can open it in Twine, okay? So they can open it and play your game in Twine themselves. Um, or you can publish. 
your story as well. So if it's really good and you want to share it, there are some places online that you can publish uh, your story. Just make sure that you have permission from everyone to log into these different websites and to share things because um, lots of these websites are made for all audiences, okay? So there's no age restrictions or things like that. Um, but that means that there's also some maybe um, older things in there as well. So do make sure that you have permission to do that. Um, but there's sites like Itch.io, um, we've, we've recommended some in our PDF. So if you want to find some websites where you can upload your story, you can do that. But you can also send people that file, they can open it in Twine, um, and then they can play your game as well. Uh, so the only thing with that is they will be able to edit your game, but on their file. So they won't edit your game in Twine, they'll only do it in theirs. Um, but that's also a good way to work together with someone. So if you have a story and you'd like some help, or you want someone to write the story with you, uh, you can send them the file and they could add bits and maybe they could send it back to you. So that's a great way to work, maybe if you want to work with someone, but you're obviously stuck at home right now, like everyone else, um, you can do that way as well, okay? So um, we've got a couple of minutes left. So if you've got any more questions, do let me know. But if not, I think that that's it. This is good stuff. Ah, oh, thanks, Dan. Well, I'm assuming it's Dan. It could be someone else using your uh, account, but hi, Dan. Thanks. So here you can duplicate your story. So maybe you're making a story and you want to maybe edit bits of it, but you don't want to edit it in the main story. You just want to see how it looks. You can duplicate it. So make a copy and edit bits in there. Okay. Um, so here you can play it. You can test it. You can delete it as well. If you wanted to do that, hopefully not. Um, but this is what you need. So when you go back to your story, it's that little gear. It's really small, probably on your live stream, but it's a little gear, a little circle. So you click on that and that will tell you everything. So if we add a new story and then we go back, you can see there'll be two. This one's only got one passage, so it's just one big circle. Okay. So hopefully when you start making your own stories, you get lots here. And if you do, send us some pictures send us your ideas um we'd love to see how they work um and i think that is everything so that's not everything with twine there is lots more you could do that's the good thing about this website is that the opportunities are endless you could add um game elements as well so they don't have to be just stories that people can read you could add things like inventories uh, so that people can pick things up along the way in their story and keep them in an inventory um you can add like rpg things so hit points like that kind of thing so it can get really complicated but also really cool and you can make like a whole game in this so you might have played these kind of um story adventure games if you've been to the museum you might have played them in the museum we've got a really good one called spelunky um if you are interested in these kinds of games that's a great one ah oh, thank you thanks for all this it was really helpful ah oh, thank you well i do hope you uh, enjoyed it and found it helpful and I do hope you make your own stories and maybe even your own games. Um, and if you want to do any other things, check out the rest of our live streams. We've got one about making pixel art animations. So you can make your own pixel art, but also make your own gifts as well. So you can send them to your friends. Uh, we've got one about making a game in Scratch. If you want to recreate Pong, which you might recognize, it's a very old game. If you want to make your own game and play it with someone, we've got a stream for that as well. Um, and we've also got about making your own characters and backgrounds and putting them into your uh, own video game as well. So if you want to learn more, you want to try something else, you can go and see those too. Um, but for now, I hope you've enjoyed this stream. I think we've got like a minute till 12 o'clock and then it's the afternoon. So I'll say good afternoon and hope that you have a lovely, lovely day. And as I said, we'll be back on Friday at 11 o'clock for uh, a Let's Play. So we'll be playing letter quest remastered um so we'll be doing some spelling writing some words and defeating some monsters with our hopefully excellent spelling but i might need your help with that so if you do want to come and watch i'll see you again on friday at 11 o'clock so i hope you all have a really lovely day okay and yeah let us know how you get on tell us on social media how you do okay we'd love to see your stories we'd love to see how you're getting on Right. Well, thank you for your lovely messages. Thanks. Uh, thank you, everyone who joined us in uh, the comments. We'll upload this to our website. 
um, or to YouTube and you can go and watch it again later on. Right, it's 12 o'clock, exactly. So I'm gonna stop it. Bang on 12 o'clock. Right, I will see you later. Thanks guys, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.